Alright guys, so I'm going to show you how to take some pretty nice irising screenshots. So I'm going to show you the process of actually taking the screenshot in the irising simulator and then moving it over to Photoshop to adjust it slightly with some motion blur and some color correction. And uh, yeah, no, it'll turn out looking pretty good. So uh, basically, I'm using a replay to do this screenshot from a, from a race I did earlier at, at Mount Panorama. But uh, you can do it pretty much anytime, whenever you want to take a screenshot. Um, so I'm using a camera pack as well to get some good camera angles. I'm using the this one here. I can't really remember where I got it, but um, so it's you've got lots of different choices here of like where you want to set up the camera. So before you even take the screenshot, you kind of you want to make sure you've got the car in good lighting and the camera in a good position. So if you don't already know, if you press Control F12 in iRacing, you can bring up this camera menu where you can completely edit where the camera is facing, um, change all the little things like this, your field of view, and then also this one here, in case there's like a fence in the way, it'll basically get rid of it if you slide it across, whatever. Um, so once you've got your camera positioned exactly where you want the screenshot to be taken, um, use your screenshotting program of preference. Um, if you're running in windowed mode you can just use like window snipping tool or if you've got another program use that whatever it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to be using fraps for this one but you, I'll, you can use whatever you want. So um, make sure you obviously press space and hide the irising overlay and then just press your screenshotting button and it should take the screenshot. Alright, so next you're going to want to open up Photoshop, that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. And uh, you can just get your screenshot here and just drag it straight in, like that. And as you can see, my screenshot is very long because it's taken on triple monitors. But um, because I've got all the bezels and stuff, you can easily see where my middle screen would be. So the first thing I'll do is just crop it. Um, you probably could take some really nice widescreen wide screen photos um, if you don't have the bezel set. Um, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just doing a s standard 16 by 9 screenshot. And I might even crop it down further um, a bit later on, just depending, to make the car look better in the frame. Um, so that's how I'm going to crop it there. Um, I'm using Spacebar. I'm holding down spacebar to drag around like this in Photoshop. Um, Alright, so that's cropped now. So that's looking pretty nice already. Um, a, another thing with these screenshots, to get a, a good screenshot, especially when using motion blur, you want to have the car as side on as possible. But I've tried to mix it up here. I've got some cars in the background and um, you can still see the front of the car as well in the screenshot. So it should actually turn out pretty nice because I've got it. I've got a nice angle, but um, yeah, usually a good out like to get a good outcome of a screenshot, like even after it's edited, it honestly comes down to how well you take the original screenshot and like what camera angle you actually use. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is go up to this um, what's it called? This tool here, and um, you're going to find the car. And you can kind of pick wherever you want to start. I'm gonna. I usually like to start on the wing because there's a nice sharp edge. And you're just gonna go through and slowly cut out the car. Try to do it as close as possible. And it's okay if you overlap it. It's better to overlap over the car than get bits of the road. Because when you motion blur it, you don't want to see any of like the background. You only want to see the car. So I'm gonna quickly do this. I'll fast forward it, and then I'll catch you once it's done. Okay, so one thing I would like to mention, uh, when you're cutting out the car, um, I like to keep the shadows of the car in the original cut and then fix them up later because once you motion blur it, you kind of lose the shadows. So, yeah, I'll show you what I mean, but this is how I like to cut it. So, as you can see, the shadow kind of comes around here. And then I'm not actually going to cut under here yet. I'm just going to go straight across. I'll 
get that one as well. And we might change this later, but for now we're going to keep it. Depending on how well it motion blurs. You don't have to be super precise either, as long as it's pretty rough and as long as you're not getting any of the background in, especially when you're not using an incredibly high resolution screenshot, um, it probably won't matter too much. And if you're uploading it to Facebook, it's going to be compressed pretty pretty hard anyway. But if you were going to make like, for example, a desktop wallpaper and you had like a 4K resolution screenshot, of course you'd probably spend more time with it. And um, if you make any mistakes with this tool, you just compress the delete key and it'll go back one. So we're almost finishing the first cutout of the car. Make sure you're obviously cutting out the very, like the outermost of the car. So, there we go. So that's the first one. As you can see, the wing and stuff, like through here, that's none of that selected, but we're gonna get to that in a sec. But um, the majority of that is pretty, pretty good. If you wanna add anything to this selection you've already got, for example, let's say I wanted a little bit more of this black outline from the mirror. Uh, if you hold down shift and then click, keep holding it down while you're clicking, you can add to that selection and then connect it back up like that. And then release shift and it'll it'll add it to the selection like that. So that's looking pretty good so far. Um, the next thing you want to do is make sure you've got your screenshot layer selected and then right click inside the cutout and go Layer, new layer via cut or layer via cut and as you can see there the car is cut out of, from the background and from here what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the rest of these parts here for example through the windows and uh, yeah I'll explain it as I, as I do it but we'll start at the wing because that's going to be the easiest part to do so making sure you've got the, the layer selected for the car cut out not the background and you can start going through here. So basically what we're going to do now is cut out furthermore everything that isn't the car. Because if you don't cut it out when you motion blur the background, obviously, like for example in the wing here, when this is cut out, in between the wing will be motion blur. But if we left it, it would just look like that. But everything else around here would still be motion blur. So once you've done the first one, for example the wing, uh, you want to right click new layer via cut and there we go it's done this one as its own separate layer as well and I'll turn that one off the turn the visibility off just by clicking here and now we can see that that's that's sorted and then we'll go somewhere else so I'm gonna it's a little bit weird when you get through the windows where it's like slightly tinted because of the plastic but I usually cut it out anyway because you can kind of fix it with color correction and it doesn't really the details don't matter too much so I'll just like do a quick one around here I mean as long as you don't really cut out the yellow numbers which you would notice a lot more it'll probably be alright so go back to this layer right click new layer by cut turn it off so go around here and obviously you could leave this but it honestly the more time you spend on it, the better the outcome will be and the, the better the detail will be. But if you just want a quick basic one that you're going to put on Facebook, you wouldn't have to go super into detail. So, like I usually don't even do the numbers, but I will for this screenshot, like the inside of the numbers. Because you probably wouldn't even notice it once it's motion blurred anyway. Because it's just a standard grey from the road. Alright, so there we go, that's pretty good so far, we've already got the rear wing done and this done. So now, easy ones is when you've got the grass through the window because it's just bright green. So 
So we're just doing rough tracing outlines. Uh, one thing you can do that might actually save you a bit of time is over here there's a tool if you right click here it might, it'll be on the quick selection tool probably by default but if you just go to the magic wand tool and if you click it oh, make sure you've got the correct layer selected click it and it'll autom automatically come up and then you can just right click layer by cut and it's probably a quick way to do it or you could use the quick selection tool uh, use your bracket keys to change the size and you could just drag over like that and it'll it'll recognize it but I'm just going to use the quick, the magic wand tool because it actually works pretty well um, especially when you have solid colors and if you want to add more to the selection hold down shift again and you can do multiple at the same time and if you want to remove some hold down alt so I'll just do these real quick so as you can see in the window here where the air intake is um, it's slightly tinted here, but I'm actually just going to remove it in total um, because it's probably oh, it's probably not going to be entirely worth it. This screenshot, and you can actually swap between tools as well because you're you're all using the same selection. So there we go. There we are. Honestly, that'll be fine. That's that's everything for that. So we'll right click, new layer by cut and if we turn off that have a quick look see if there's anything else so there's a little bit in here we can do and that's probably it I mean there's a few other things like that but really it, do it doesn't matter a whole lot um, so there you've got a nice clean cut out of the car so what you do now I'm just gonna drag this up for a sec so I can see all my layers better um, I'm going to turn off the layer of the car, then turn on all of these other layers. So these are all the cutouts we made of the car, and then turn on the background as well. So you can see literally everything except for the car. Um, so I'm going to drag this layer up, and then click the bottom one, hold down shift, click the top one, and then right click and go merge layers, or you can do control E, that'll do the same thing, and it'll merge all the selected layers together. And now you've got, I, I like to have the background on the bottom at all times, but um, now you've got the car separated from the background entirely. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this space here because when we motion blur it, there's obviously a huge transparent area. And if this is motion blurred, like it's not going to be able to blur anything. If it's going to drag something from here across, once it's blurred, it's 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 just going to look not very good. So what we're going to do is turn off this layer, and we're going to use our magic wand tool, and we're just going to click inside on the background everything that's transparent. So as you can see, everything is selected, and it's automatically cut out everything. And then we go right click, and then we go. Sorry, we once we've selected everything, we go over to here to the rectangle marquee tool and right click and then go fill and under the contents you want to select content aware so basically what this is doing is it's going to fill this selection but it's going to do it based on what the program thinks is around it and it's going to do as best of a job as possible at like guessing so all the colors will kind of match you'll see what I mean um, so click OK alright so there we go as you can see it looks weird like there's these cars and stuff but roughly it's not too bad like there's obviously road here it's obviously realized there's grass here it's even got a bit of the curb if you really want it doesn't really matter because you can have a car over anywhere but you could use the rectangle marquee tool just to fix it up again so right click and then fill content aware there we go now it's obviously kind of messy but it doesn't like I said it doesn't actually matter because you're going to be motion blurring it anyway so you won't really notice and the more intense you motion blur the less it will actually matter um, so one thing I like to do as you can see there's a, a feather from the selection around here so what there's a few things you can do the first one is uh, get a new layer have this set to black and then press alt backspace and it'll just fill it in with black so rather than being transparent now it's actually black and then there's another thing you can do uh, it's over here the spot healing brush tool 
So select your background layer, and you can just quickly run over it like this. And it's basically using like the same content aware tool to just fix it up. So then that way when you blur it, there won't be any weird lines. It doesn't matter if it's not in focus or it's blurred because it's going to be motion blurred anyway. You don't actually have to be able to read anything or anything. Uh, do it just over here through the grass. So there's going to be a lot of like weird patching and stuff. And this probably isn't the best way to do it, but this is just the way that I've done it because you can kind of get it done pretty quick once you get used to it. That's honestly not too bad. The rest of that stuff, um, honestly, you could probably fix this, I guess. And obviously here, because it's clearly, like there's clearly no road there, so you could actually go over this with a fill content aware, and it'll patch it up probably better than it was. But honestly, that's, that's going to be fine. Um, that shouldn't matter too much. But the more time you spend on it, the better it'll turn out. So as you can see, I just patched up all that grass pretty easily. There we go. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. That's actually quite okay. Um, I'm going to fix this part here. Again, with the spot healing brush. Just along the wing. Boom, that's gone now. So that'll be fine. That's, that's our background pretty much ready for the motion blur. So... Um, I like to leave the car on when I'm doing the motion blur because it gives you a good indication of like how the final product will actually look. Um, there's a few different ways to do this motion blur. There's You can either use blur motion blur or you can go to blur gallery and use the path blur. Both will give like slightly different effects. You have a lot more control with the path blur but in this like tutorial I'm just going to use motion blur because it's a lot simpler to do. Alright so already like this is kind of just what it's defaulted to. Um, but the first thing you want to do before you change any of the distance, because that's not going to matter yet, is you want to get the angle correct. So your angle is going to be determined, I like to determine it by like the direction of the car that it's going like, for example, obviously the car is going from left to right here, but it's on a slight angle. So everything will be blurred in line with that. So you can kind of imagine it as the camera is like following the car, what line is that following? So it's going straight across here. So the car is slightly tilted, the, bot the, the front right wheel is slightly higher than the, the rear right wheel. So I'm just going to adjust the angle slightly to maybe like negative 4 whatever, like that. Um, if you want to see the angle more pronounced, you can increase the distance. And obviously, it's not going to look like that, right? So there's a good indication. So you just want to get the angle correct. And then you can start toning in the blur. So I think negative 4 works best. That's kind of... If you just imagine this line here with the car, that's probably not too bad. Or you can use a, a marking on the road or a curb or a wall if you're doing a shot. Like, for example, if you're doing it at the top of the mountain, you'd get this lined up with the wall. That way, when it's blurred, the wall is not going to be pushing itself up and down with the blur. It's going to be directly across. So already, that is looking like insane that looks so much better than it was um, without it for example so depending on the intensity um, the intensity you what you want that's how you determine this but I've got some cars in the background so I don't know if I want it too blurred like I wouldn't go anything extreme like that it is it actually looks kind of good but it's probably not super realistic. The car's not really going that quick. So... I'll probably go with about about 40. Because I don't want these lines in the background to be too blurred either. But, as you can see, that looks very nice. looks clean. The car's like clearly... And it looks like it was taken with a professional camera. So, already that car's nice and cut out. That's looking pretty good. Um, now, as you can see, because I've cut out the shadows, 
you can see right here that it obviously doesn't fit properly but um but if you're taking a photo of a car that's moving the shadow is not going to be blurred the shadow is going to going to sit there with it because it's with the car it's not it, it's moving with the car it's not stationary so what I usually do is I'll pull out the blur tool so right click over here go blur make it slightly bigger and then make sure on the car layer and you just blur it up a bit I'm using 30% strength I think the default is 50 but you can adjust it just blur this up and as you can see already you can't see the texture of the road anymore it's just it just looks grey like an actual shadow just go along here might even be easier if you turn it off so you can actually see exactly where it is and then over the back turn it back on and that's looking pretty neat um, another thing as you can see with the wheel it's cut pretty sharp along here so I like to blur the edges of the wheels just so they look like they're a lot more in motion and especially when you don't cut it perfectly just fix it up like that and then same with uh, around here I like to give it a nice soft blur just to get rid of the rid of the pixelation you notice it a lot more on whites when whites are near the road just a nice fix like that especially up here as you can see just a nice little edge just tends to clean it up when you don't have as much time to do a perfect cutout and you can do a little bit inside the car as well don't forget that and that's honestly not looking too bad that's pretty good um, yeah yeah, that's a pretty, pretty clean cutout. The blur is just kind of a lazy way to get rid of the pixelation without actually looking too bad. But yeah, the main thing is for the shadows. If you're going to cut out your shadows, because screenshots tend to look pretty weird. If it's just a car with no shadow, it doesn't look realistic. It doesn't doesn't suit it. But um, yeah, that's not too bad actually. Um, obviously if you zoom in a lot like it's not going to look perfect but at the end of the day it's just an irising screenshot um, you can apply this to real world photos as well if you want to add like a synthetic blur I've done that with my carding photos before in the past but um yeah so the next thing you're going to want to do is I like to work on the background before the car when it comes to color correction because um, I like to do the car one separately so I'm just going to go to adjustments and then if you don't see this tab by the way you can just click window and then adjustments and it'll show up it might be on the side here but whatever um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the curves so I drag this so it's only above this layer of the background and then click here I'm going to have to drag the layers down a bit so I can actually use this tool um, and I've seen this technique used by Lee Ellis so credit to him but um, what he does is he drags up the top and pulls down the bottom a bit so it's basically going to make the white is whiter and the, the dark is like darker um, and it really makes the track pop especially when you've got white curbs and red curbs they tend to pop a lot harder so he's going to drag this little node around until it looks good so obviously the further down you go and the further to the right you go the darker it's going to get but the further to the left and up the wider it'll be so I'm happy probably with something like that we can adjust this later anyway this is just for the background so already you can see a pretty considerable difference in just the color correction for the background um, the next thing I'll do is the curves for the car and you want to make sure you kind of do these relative to each other because you don't want the colors on the car to look too off compared to the colors in the background so kind of 
just keep that in mind when you're doing it. Um, so I've added another curves and I've got it above the car. And because I only want it over the car, I'm going to click here and then create a clipping mask. So basically what this is doing, anything I do to here, it's going to be clipped to the outline of this car here. So it's not going to do it on any of the grass, it's only going to do it on the car. And this will come in handy later when we, when we do a selective color adjustment. So once you've got the curves here, um, like I said before, drag that up and then drag this down and you can get the car to look really sharp really fast and as you can see it's made the blacks and the whites on the CGU logo pop really hard and it's um, added a lot more like vibrance and contrast to the to the metallic blue on the side of the car as well it actually has helped the shadows fit in better because this is what it looked like without the color correction on the car as you can see the shadow just doesn't fit because we've adjusted the background but then once you add it, it drops it in, keeps it darker, and it suits the theme of the photo a lot more. Um, so, as you can see, as I've added that color correction, we've noticed a few more like blemish, pixel blemishes, I guess you could call them. So I'm just going to blur them up a bit with the blur tool. But at the end of the day, like that's pretty, pretty minor. You don't really need to focus on that too much. Um, so the curves is pretty much, you just adjust that to how you like it. You know, you might, it depends on the color already in the photo and, and whatnot. There we go. If you want the whites to pop, especially on white liveries, cranking this up as high as you can kind of get it will make it look very nice and realistic. And that's looking pretty nice so far. Um, some might argue that that's a bit dark, but you can fix that later if it is. Um, obviously just adjust them back a bit or another thing you can do is just adjust the opacity without specifically doing it. you can just what sorry without adjusting the curves you can kind of be lazy and just adjust how much of this curve filter you want applied like a percentage um, but I'm actually pretty happy with it I think it looks quite nice um, there's a lot of other color correction things you can do you know you could download some like filters or whatever you can download some filters or whatever, but it's up to you. Um, the next thing I would do is a selective color. So basically, I'm going to apply this only to the car because you might want specific logos or colors on the car to pop a lot harder. So cl clipping mask this one again. And so this is the color you are going to change, and you can change like different properties of that color. I usually just mess around with black and white, so it's basically adjusting like the luminance of the color. So, um, for example, for the whites, I know it seems a bit like weird how you've got you're adjusting the black of the white or the black of the black or the black of the neutral, but it's pretty much this is just like a brightness thing. So if I adjust the white here, you c it's pretty minor, but with it turned up, the car gets a lot browner. But with it turned down, it sh it's a bit of a sharp white. You'll notice a lot more when I go to the blacks. So here. You can adjust all that. So if you want it to be a much more like darky, moody photo, crank this down a bit and it'll look pretty smart. Um, and then there's other things you do, for example, the yellows. Um, so if you look at all the yellow just on this car, when I slide this up and down, you can make the yellows pop. That actually looks quite nice with the yellow set up. It looks really good with the wheels. Um, and then if I was gonna do like a cyan or a blue, same thing, you can adjust like, it's almost adjusting the hue honestly, but it's actually just the like the luminance. Um, but I'm going to leave the blue at default and maybe you can mess around with the neutrals, kind of does like a bit of an overall, but I'm pretty happy with that on standard anyway. Um, so there's one last thing I like to adjust on my photos and that's just with a brightness slash contrast over the whole thing. So, at first I kind of press auto, and it'll, it'll do an auto thing. You can also do this with the contrast, uh, sorry, the curves, there's an auto setting you can do, but it, I, don't, I don't like it that much, it doesn't, it kind of makes the photos a lot too bright and too contrasty. Um, so yeah, so set that to auto, and as you can see, it's tried to take a lot of contrast out of the photo, but I kind of want that contrast in it. Um, Alright, maybe 
I'll listen to it and I'll take a little bit out, but adding brightness tends to make the photos pop a lot harder as well. So I'm a, I might do a very small adjustment on this photo, but in the past I've definitely cranked it, like cranked a brightness on a, on a, low, a low lit photo, and it's made the cast stand out a lot better. It's honestly overhauled the photo a lot. But that's looking pretty good. Um, there's definitely other adjustments you could do. You could make it a bit cleaner. You could, again, like go through with the, the blur tool and fix this up a bit. You know, remove that pixelation. But that in itself is looking like a sick screenshot. So if I grab the original one real quick and drag it uh, back on, just move that up. And I'll show you a quick before and after. So this is before and this is after. It's looking a lot more racy, a lot more realistic. Um, there's definitely work I probably could have done with making the background look a lot better. Like there's a lot more adjustments you can do, for example, uh, maybe not hue and saturation, but um, like the levels adjustment, you can adjust like how dark the blacks are and how dark the whites are. Um, so you can move it down, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm pretty happy with how it is. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, if you have any questions, just, just message me or, or leave a comment or whatever, and I'll get back to you. But uh, yeah, that's it. Cheers.